Hello, my name is Daryl Wildberg. I am a Jehovah's Witness in good standing. Or if you prefer, I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses in good standing. Either is grammatically correct. Now this video is not approved by the Watchtower Bible Tract Society of New York or the Watchtower Bible Tract Society of Pennsylvania or the nine faithful members of that governing body who take the lead among Jehovah's Witnesses. They are not our leaders. Not yet. Or any, it's not approved by any local body of elders. I don't work for the elders. I don't work for the governing body. I don't work for the Watchtower Bible Tract Society. I work for Jesus Christ. Like all 8.6 million Jehovah's Witnesses throughout the earth, we are not calling men our leaders. Our leader is one. It's Jesus Christ, Matthew 23, 10. Now please uh, bear with me in this video. It, it, it's kind of a touchy subject, and many have asked the question, uh, how can I personally know God? I mean, how, how, did, how do I do that? He's up there. He, I don't see him. I, how, do, how, how is that possible? Do you have that question in the back of your mind? He is invisible. He doesn't speak to us in voice, although he does talk to us in the Bible. So, so what, what are we? What are we to do? I mean, how do we get to know this God, this, you know, this majestic individual on high? Well, now you can get to know God personally by learning about Him and taking steps to please Him. God will then draw close to you in James 4 8. Please turn with me there in your Bibles to James, the book of James. And we're going to consider uh, chapter 4. And verse 8. That's James 4 8. Draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. Now, in Acts 17, 27, uh, this word of God uh, promises us, it assures us that God is not far off from each one of us. That's right. He's not far off from you. Now, what are the steps to, 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 uh, to know God? Well, uh, the first step is w what the Bible says. I mean, that's basically where we find out about God. If it wasn't for that Bible, we wouldn't even know about him. So again, turn with me to 2 Timothy. And, and chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. And we're going to consider uh, what is said here. Now, Paul describes this Bible and what, what this Bible is. And it starts in verse 16. It says, All Scripture is inspired of God and beneficial for teaching, for reproving, for setting things straight, for disciplining in righteousness. So the man of God may be fully competent, completely equipped for every good work. Verse 17. Now, when it says all scriptures inspired of God, we generally divide the Bible uh, into two parts, old and new. Stop that. It's not old and new. It's Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Those were the languages that the Bible was brought about by. But the author is Jehovah God. Now he used some 40 men to, to write his Bible. They were all Jews. <laughs> so what's the meaning of Timothy 3.16? Well, God is the author of the Bible. He put his thoughts into the minds of those 40 some men who actually wrote the Bible like secretaries. And by means of this unique book, God has revealed his will for you and for me. He has also revealed facets of his personality, including his love, justice, and mercy. Exodus 34, 6, Deuteronomy 32, 4. 
But what can we do? Well, first of all, you need to read that Bible daily. Joshua 1.18 says you should read it every waking moment that you can. I mean, there's other things we got to do, of course. But then you need to ask yourself, first of all, you need to reflect on what you read, and then you need to ask yourself, what does this teach me about God as a person? As an example, read Jeremiah 29.11. And then you ask yourself, what does God want from me, peace or calamity? Is he a vengeful God? Or does he want me to have a good future? So let's turn there to Jeremiah. That's Jeremiah. Chapter 29. And we're going to consider verse 11. And it reads, For I well know the thoughts that I am thinking toward you, declares Jehovah, thoughts of peace, not of calamity, to give you a future and a hope. So you see, God really wants you to have this future and this hope. So, does God want peace or calamity? He wants you to have peace. He wants us to have a good future. Now, the next question that many ask. What the Bible says about creation? Now, you see, God's invisible to us. We don't see God. But his qualities are clearly seen from the world's creation onward because they are perceived by the things made, Romans 1.20. You see, I see God in little babies and the animals and the flowers in the ocean all oh, the ocean is so beautiful different multi colored species of fish I see God in the, the majestic of a, of a redwood tree or what about the Thuzula, the Methuselah tree it's 5,000 years old estimated of course so what does that mean when it says he is perceived by the things made? Well, God's physical creations reveal aspects of, of his personality, just as a work of art can reveal much about the artist, or the complex machine can say much about the inventor. To illustrate the capacity and complexity of the human brain reveal God's wisdom, and it, the control, the energy in the sun and other stars demonstrates his dynamic power. Please turn with me, if you will, to the book of Psalms. And we're going to consider Psalm 104.25. So, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's not. It's 104.24. I'm going to get you all confused here. And again, I'm quoting from the uh, New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, but you can use any Bible because they all say basically the same thing. And verse 24 there in Psalm 104 says this, How many your works are, O Jehovah! You have made all of them in wisdom. The earth is full of what you have made. Isn't that a beautiful psalm? Now the psalmist here knew that Jehovah created all these things that he took in his, before his eyes, and they were all beautiful. But, but what can you do? Well, you can take time to observe and learn about our natural world. For instance, a hummingbird's heart beats 2,500 times a minute, and the blue whale's heart beats nine times a minute. What? Yeah. The, the whale's heart is as big as a compact car. Some of its veins, its arteries, are big enough for a small child to crawl through. It can weigh as much as 40 bull, bull elephants. That's the largest elephants. 100 feet long. It's the largest creature that we know of was ever put on the earth. Larger than any of the dinosaurs that we know of. We don't know of anything larger than the blue whale. And the hummingbird, the most beautiful little hummingbirds that you see 
they can fly around your face and stuff if you're out in the patio watching them like I used to do. When their feeders were out, they used to come here and fly before my face, let me know that they're out. What a beautiful little bird. 2,500 times that heart beats a minute. And their diet is almost pure sugar. So what do these amazing designs that manifested in nature reveal about God? <laughs> eh? <laughs> of course. There are many things that nature cannot tell us about our Creator. That is why He gave us the Bible. He gave us this instruction manual. Use God's name. Now, God has a name. In English, it's Jehovah. And if you speak Hebrew, it's Yehoweh. It's not Yahweh. There's three syllables. They've already determined that. So it's Yehoweh. But the Bible clearly says that I will protect him because he knows my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. Psalm 91, 14 through 15. Oh, that's so amazing. You've got to use God's name. Now, it's been in use, Jehovah in English. Many claim that, well, we don't know what vowels went with what. We don't know. Look at it this way. The name Jehovah for God has been in use for centuries. Now, don't you think that if God didn't like that name, didn't appreciate the name that means, Jehovah means he who causes us to become, do you think that, don't you think that God would have enlightened us as to what he wants to be called? Yeah, he did, and he wants to be called Jehovah in English. And God, whose name is Jehovah, gives special attention to those who know his name and use it respectfully. Psalm 83.18 What does it say? Well, let's look it up. If you have the old version of the King James Bible and the Old English, You can go to Psalm 83, 18, and it'll tell you what God's name is. That's Psalm 83 and verse 18. It says, May people know that you, whose name is Jehovah, you alone are the Most High over all the earth. And in Psalms, uh, I mean in Isaiah 42, 8, God has introduced himself. He says this, I am Jehovah, that is my name. <laughs> Isaiah 42, 8. It's there, folks. The name of God is Jehovah. So what can you do? Well, you can use Jehovah's name when referring to him. Talk to Jehovah in prayer. And it don't always have to be a prayer. You ladies out there, you can go when you're dressing in the morning, does this look good, Jehovah, or does this look good? Huh? Well, Jehovah, would you like to sit with me and watch this movie? Jesus, would you like to sit with me and watch this movie? Would you invite Jesus or Jehovah into your house to watch the movie? Watch any movie that you chose. So that makes Jehovah real into your life. Now the meaning, now Jehovah draws close to those who pray to him in faith. Prayer is an aspect of worship that shows our deep respect for God. What can you do though? Pray to God often. Please turn with me again in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians. It's 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to consider chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 17. 
here Paul's telling them about the times of the seasons to be awake constantly awake and verse 17 reads pray constantly <laughs> tell him your concerns talk to God just like I'm talking to you right now I don't see you but I'm talking to you See, you can talk to God like that and if you can't pray verbally write it down write him a letter write it down you write down your prayer uh, Jehovah my heavenly father and then you can supplement him or petition him this will build your faith in God Psalm 62 8 tell him your concerns and how you feel he wants to hear from you. Now remember this, in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, Without faith it is impossible to please God well. What does that mean? Well, if you do good things, you please God. I don't care who you are. You could be the wickedest person on the face of the earth, but when he does good things, he pleases God. Because God is good. Remember what Jesus told the disciple? When the disciple came to Jesus and told him, good teacher, Jesus says, why do you say I'm good? He's good. God is good. Was Jesus not good? No, no. Of course he was. But he credited his father for his goodness. Job was the epitome of good. And Jesus mimicked his father. So we have to have faith that Jehovah will answer our prayers, as Hebrews 11:6. If we don't have faith that he will answer our prayers, he will not answer our prayers. It's just that simple. You've got to have faith that God will answer your prayers. Now, don't be asking, don't be asking for no Mercedes Benz because it's not going to end up there. That's not how God works or a bag full of money. So we have to pray for things that are, are in his will, you know, that would uh, supplement his sanctification of his name, you know, uh, to help him, to help us get the message through. We want to make our prayers for others, basically. So in the Bible, having faith means more than just simply believing that God exists. The, the demons believe God exists. And it also means having complete trust in him, including his promises and standards. Trust is crucial to a good relationship. If you don't think that God hears you, he doesn't. He won't. you got to have faith. you got to have faith that Jehovah God is the rewarder of prayer for those who earnestly seek him in righteousness. Not asking for the Mercedes because you don't need a Mercedes. <laughs> So what can we do? Well, genuine faith is based on knowledge. Uh, Romans 10, 17. Hey, hey. Let, let, let's uh, rendezvous there, Romans. Book of Romans, chapter 10, and verse 17. I have a slow tablet. So faith follows the thing heard. In turn, what is heard is through the word about Christ. You see, Christ is the beginning of faith. See, it's knowledge. Christ is about knowledge. Remember uh, John 17, 3. Christ himself told us, this means everlasting life. They're coming to know you. This is during a prayer to God, the only true God and the one you sent, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ always placed himself second before God. Most important thing in the universe is Jehovah God. So study the Bible and prove to yourself that you can trust God in his advice. And Jehovah's Witnesses would be happy to study that Bible with you at any time. You can go to jw.org, fill out a form there. Or you can call your local kingdom hall. They'll send somebody over. 
Now, do what pleases God. You see, what does the Bible say about that? Well, this is what the love of God means, that we observe his commandments. 1 John 5, 3. If you love Jehovah God, you observe his commandments. And what's the meaning of that? Well, Jehovah is close to those who show their love for him. By what? By their best to obey his commandments. Doing their best. That doesn't mean you're going to keep every one of them, you know, like Jesus did. My gosh, your name ain't Jesus, and this ain't 2,000 years ago, so you're not going to be perfect. Jehovah God knows that. That's why he sent Jesus. Now ask yourself this, what, can, what you can do to, to, to enforce this? As you study the Bible, know what God likes and dislikes. Ask yourself this, what adjustments can I make in order to please my Creator? 1 Thessalonians 4.1 Experience God's care by applying His advice. What does the Bible say about that? Well, by experience you will see that God is good. Psalm 34.8 What's it mean? God invites you to see for yourself how good he is. You can test him out in that respect. When you experience his love and support, you will want to draw close to him. Anything that you ask in his name for his will, he will provide. What can you do? Well, as you read the Bible, apply God's advice and experience the benefits this brings. Isaiah 48, 17. Uh, observe my commandments, he says. It benefits you. Uh, us obeying God doesn't benefit him, it benefits us because God is perfect in all aspects. So he's not going to tell us to do something that's not perfect. So we also have to observe these real life examples of individuals in the Bible who, with God's help, overcame challenges improve their lives and the lives of their families and found true happiness. Now, what are the misconceptions about knowing God? Well, God is too powerful and important. He's too, he's way out there. He's too removed from us. He doesn't want to be close to me. You ever had that thought? Erase it. Erase that thought. God loves you, Jehovah God. Even though God is the most powerful and important being in the existence, he invites you to draw close to him. See, only Jehovah God listens to prayer, so when you pray, Jehovah God hears your prayer. Now, if you're praying for the Mercedes, he might hear it, but he's not listening. So don't pray for the Mercedes. Pray for other people. Put that on your agenda for mostly. Pray for the people that are struggling. The Bible contains many examples of men and women who became his close friends. Acts 13.22 and James 2.23. Another misconception. We cannot know God because he is a mystery. <laughs> the facts are, some things about God are difficult to comprehend. No doubt about that. Such as his being invisible spirit. Still, we can get to know God in fact, the Bible says that we need to get to know him in order to gain everlasting life. Again, John 17, 3. In terms we can understand, the Bible tells us about Jehovah God, revealing his personality, his purpose for mankind and for the earth, and his standards. Isaiah 45, 18 and 19, 1 Timothy 2, 4. And as mentioned before, the Bible also reveals God's name, Psalm 83, 18. We can thus not only know God, but also draw close to him, James 4, 8. For examples of God's wisdom as revealed in nature, you, you can look at different things on jw.org. Was it designed? Uh, the name of Jehovah is understood by many to mean he causes to become. By revealing this name, God is saying, in effect, I will cause my will and purpose to be realized. I always fulfill my word. You can look at the article on jw.org, Why Pray? Will God Answer Me? 
And you can also watch the video there, What Happens at the Bible Study. And you can watch the series. You can be part of the series, The Bible Changes Lives. Folks, it's all there. Jehovah God loves you. But he demands respect. He's not just God. He is Jehovah. He has a name. Try using his name in your next prayer. You might be surprised. You know what? Thanks for watching this video. And stay tuned for the next one. It'll be a little while. Thanks again. Have a wonderful day.